So in today's video, I'm going to be going over how strong Yuto Kosu is in Jujutsu Kaisen. And with him making an appearance today during the last episode of season two, I think this is the perfect time to talk about how strong he actually is. So be sure to smash that like button and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this on the channel. And keep in mind there will be spoilers in relation to Yuto Kotsu from the manga. And let's get right into it. Yuto has initially introduced us as a protagonist of Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, which is the prequel series to Jujutsu Kaisen. He's a rather timid individual due to his past experiences of being bullied. And we learned that during his childhood, he ended up being cursed by his childhood lover, Rika Orimoto, after she was run over in an accident. Although with hindsight, it was actually him who cursed her after rejecting her death. This ends up being Yuta's gateway into the world of Jujutsu as he was to be executed due to the potential harm he and Rika posed to society as Rika is exceptionally strong being classified as a special grade apparition and the queen of curses. After Gojo intervened to get Yuta's execution dismissed, Yuta enrolls into Jujutsu High as a first year while initially not having any noticeable skills of his own but always having Rika as a last resort if he needed to fight. During the events of Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, Yuta becomes competent with a sword after a period of time training and he gains the standard knowledge of Jujutsu being cursed energy control and application, as seen through his channeling of cursed energy into his sword to fight. He also has bottomless cursed energy making him extremely powerful and resourceful, this being a result of his ancestral relationship to Michizane no Sugawara, one of the three vengeful spirits of Japan, who Gojo also shares relation to. At the time however most of his abilities were made apparent through Rika, he was able to copy other people's techniques as seen through him using Inumaki's cursed speech and he was able to use the highly advanced reverse curse technique with little to no effort. Yuta was even strong enough to defeat Suguru Geto, who was a special grade sorcerer dubbed as the strongest alongside Gojo in the past, while only being a sorcerer for a few months. However, with the end of Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, Rika Orimoto passed on and Yuta lost his special grade status. So this information, while relevant to Yuta, doesn't all apply to the current Yuta we see in the series, which is why I just briefly mentioned it for the sake of contrast. The current Yuta we see in Jujutsu Kaisen following Rika's death worked his way back to the rank of special grade after only 3 months, once again making him one of the only 4 special grades in the series alongside Gojo, Geto and Yuki Tsukimo and he's only a second year in Jujutsu High, praised to be a prodigy and second only to Gojo in unusual abilities. So Yuta without full insight into his current abilities as of his return to Japan since he was overseas in Africa is already a major problem. But let's get into his abilities before touching on some of his fights and feats so far in Jujutsu Kaisen. Yuta is now a master swordsman and an adept fighter capable of easily dispatching of curses of all grades. Even though Rika passed in Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, Yuta now has a copy of Rika that was left by the original Rika Remoto serving as an external storage for him. And this new Rika is still insanely powerful and can fight with Yuta as he battles. Rika can instantly manifest as soon as Yuta wills it and while prior in Jujutsu Kaisen Zero Yuta needed the ring to manifest Rika even in the slightest, this isn't the case for the current Rika as seen through her partial manifestation in Shibuya. However, while Yuta is connected to Rika through the ring, that is the only scenario where he can fully manifest Rika and get complete access to all his powers and curse techniques. When Rika is fully manifested, Yuta can use his copy curse technique and he has access to Rika's stored curse energy. Yuta by himself already has so much cursed energy that is perceived as bottomless, he even has more than Gojo. However, once he's connected to Rika through the ring, he can replenish his cursed energy if need be. Rika also serves as a storage unit for Yuta, containing a variety of cursed tools that he can use, which definitely adds to his versatility in combat. And naturally, once Rika's fully manifested, she's much stronger than when she's not. However, given all these benefits that comes about from a complete manifestation, the drawback is that this state only lasts for 5 minutes, which is the biggest difference between Yuta from Jujutsu Kaisen Zero and the current Yuta. However, he himself has become more proficient as a sorcerer in every regard, so this Rika nerf I guess you can say isn't that big of a problem. And just to make it clear, when Yuta fully manifests Rika in relation to his copy technique, he can use the abilities of anyone he's ever copied prior or present within these 5 minutes, as seen by his use of cursed speech and sky manipulation in rapid succession. However, the means of his copying and whether the act of copying in general is limited to these 5 minutes is ambiguous, due to the fact we still don't know exactly how Yuta copies one's technique and whether there's only one method to copy. Although we saw Rika eat Uro's arm which gave Yuta instant access to her technique, there's still plausible grounds for him copying techniques outside of this method due to the fact he copied Inimaki back in JJK0 without having Rika consume any of his DNA or body parts. So it's pretty much up in the air exactly how Yuta's copyability truly works, though I personally am an advocate of it being knowledge based and him being able to copy once he understands the technique, while having the option of Rika consuming a body part or DNA which bypasses the process of understanding and instantly gives him the ability to use a technique at his maximum. Because using cursed speech as an example, the two times we see him use it, first is with a megaphone in JJK0 and then he actually has the snake eyes and fangs on his mouth in the Sendai colony. So it could be due to him understanding and becoming more proficient with said technique over time. 
Outside the cursed speech, Yusuf has also copied the Uro's sky manipulation technique, which allows him to manipulate the sky, and he also manifested many Shikigami in the likeness of Rika after copying Drift's technique. So Yusa can deploy a large amount of tactics in battle and is extremely versatile as you never know what he will do next. As a viewer, we don't even know how many cursed techniques Yuta has or what he can be had in his locker. Even without access to his cursed techniques, Rika and her complete manifestation mode, the 5 minutes, etc. Yuta is insanely powerful with his reinforced body and katana due to his large amounts of cursed energy. The physical enhancements he receives from his reinforcement with cursed energy even allowed him to keep up with the superhuman Yuji Sidori and overwhelm him. This also being paired with the fact that he can use reverse curse technique with ease, Yuta is a big problem without even going all out at this point in the series. Also, on top of this, Yuta has the ability to use a domain expansion, although we never actually got to see it. Since the deployment of three domains and Rika and Kuroshi's interference ruined what could have been one of the most insane moments in Jujutsu Kaisen, but one would assume his domain would be related to his ability to copy curse techniques. But due to the fact he can copy curse techniques, his domain can literally be anything, potentially even other people's domains, or it could be a situation where multiple techniques are imbued in his domain. It's honestly a big mystery at this point and all up to speculation. But having a domain expansion at his disposal at his age not only shows how talented he is, but how well rounded he is with his abilities. Because we already know most of the top tiers within Jujutsu Kaisen have a domain expansion, which is the pinnacle of sorcery, and can use reverse curse technique, which honestly puts him worlds apart from other characters. And we also know Yusu can shoot pure curse energy as a projectile, also known as his love beam when Rika's fully manifested, which is a great feat in itself since being able to shoot out massive amounts of raw cursed energy without using a curse technique is crazy, with Yusa and Ishigori being the only examples of doing this so far in the series. With that being said though, that's pretty much it for Yusa's abilities, however outside of this, Yusa's received loads of praise within Jujutsu Kaisen that is a testament to his strength and untapped potential, with Gojo even saying to Kenjaku during the time of his seeding that he should essentially be worried about him. Yusa was even stated to be most of our group's insurance following the battle in Shinjuku and Kenjaku knows he's a big threat to his plans. Yuta has also fought many strong individuals from Ghetto to the special grades in Sendai being Uro, Ishiguri, Driv and Kuroshi. He even made light work of Choso and made Yuji think that he was scarier than Gojo while also making Naoya feel inferior and with him being second only to Gojo in unusual abilities and having the second largest amount of cursed energy after Sukuna, he has a lot going for him and he's truly blessed. So in regards to Yuta's strength, he's easily hanging with the top tier characters in the show outside of Gojo and Sukuna. Certain matchups and battles might prove difficult for him, but for the most part, Yuta doesn't really have many obstacles. And I think the biggest point to take away is that with his ability, everything is still ambiguous and we still haven't even seen his domain expansion. So Yuta can honestly do anything at this point, but we just have to wait and see the heights of his power when he truly goes all out. But we also have to take into account the statement from Uro of Yuta reaching his limit and the perspective this adds to his character potentially not progressing further or even shattering these limits and reaching the realm of characters like Gojo and Sukuna. But we just have to wait and see. But with that being said, that's it for the video. Yuta is definitely one of Jujutsu Kaisen's heavy hitters and although we can see that he's already insanely powerful, I'm very interested to see how much further he can develop and what Gege has in store for him in the future. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe for more Jujutsu Kaisen content. We also had the ending of season 2 for Jujutsu Kaisen today, so be sure to let me know your thoughts on the season down below. And check out my other video going over the anime's finale, which is either out right now or will be dropping a few hours after this video. But I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.